In this video, we're going to better understand the loft edge conditions for align edges and align to surface in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're going to do part two of our surface mastery series. And this one's going to answer a question that came up about the loft tool that's actually pretty good because there's not a lot of info or resources to better understand this. So what I'm talking about is when you create a surface loft, there are edge conditions when you use tangent or curvature constraints to align to edges, which we often use, and align to surface. Now, when you first use these tools, they appear to do the exact same thing. So in this video, we're going to better understand what those two do and how we can apply them. So to get started, there's no download data set. I wanted to walk through the process of creating some initial surfaces to talk about this process and how it affects these results. So oftentimes when we get started and we're building out lofts, I'm just gonna start by just creating a couple of offset planes. I'm gonna start a new sketch and I'm gonna use my spline tool. I'm just gonna create something that has sort of this V shape to it. I'm not really concerned with that V shape but we're just gonna build some sort of surface. You can make it whatever you want. You can add some waves in there. It doesn't really matter. But ultimately what we're gonna do is we're gonna loft between those. So we're gonna create a surface loft and we're gonna say, okay. Now this surface loft has some shape, has some wave to it. And what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna expand my bodies in my sketches folder. I'm gonna take this body on the right hand side M on the keyboard, and I'm gonna move this up because we're gonna do a couple of different examples. Next, using those same exact curves, I'm gonna create another loft, but this time when I loft between these two, I'm gonna use the direction option. Now the reason the direction option is important here is because it changes the way that these edges curve. So when we look at the result, the surface is very similar. However, when we start and end at these profiles, the direction of those edges, including the curvature of the surface itself, is going normal to those sketch profiles. Now you can also use that option to change the angle that they're going, but this kind of helps us better understand. Next, I'm gonna take both of these bodies and I'm gonna use M again, and I'm just gonna move them over here because we're gonna loft between a mirrored version of them. Now I wanna take both of these and simply create a mirrored version. So we're gonna mirror them across the default X, Z plane. And now we have something that we can loft between. Now when we look at this, if you want, you can take the two on the right hand side, you can use move and you can rotate them 180 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate them around just to give the object a little bit different shape and they don't even need to be aligned. We can have them offset from each other as well. So. Now that we have these, let's go ahead and explore creating some lofts between them. And then we're going to take a look at those options. So first, we're going to take a look at the bottom ones. We're going to create a loft from this edge to this edge here. Now, when we do that, I'm going to change the end conditions to tangent for both of them. And currently, and by default, we have free edges turned on. When we change this to align edges, what we're actually doing is we're taking a look at the edges of the surface and we're using that for continuity of the surface patch or the loft that's being created. Now, if we change this to align to surface, this is where the confusion comes in because nothing is different. Now, the reason that nothing is different here is because these surfaces were created using the direction option where the edges of our surface are actually normal to the direction of the curvature. The surface and the edges are in unison because we didn't add any guide curves or any additional constraints. So when you try to play around with this tool, you're not going to get any different result simply by using that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put R1 for result one, and I'm gonna hide that. Let's go ahead and try the exact same thing on the other version where we looked at using just a simple loft between these. Now, the difference here is that these edges are straight. Now, once again, I'm gonna use tangent on both sides and I'm gonna to change to align edges. Now, in this instance, what we're doing is we're taking the tangency of the edges and we're carrying that out for our result surface. And once again, when we use align to surface, nothing happens. And here's where the frustration of this tool really comes in. 
And that's because you toggle that on and off. I'm gonna change this to R2. You toggle it on and off and you don't see any change. Now, here's where the tool makes sense. And here is how we're gonna better understand it. We're gonna start a new sketch. We're gonna do this on the top. And I'm gonna use project P on the keyboard to project that edge. And I'm also gonna project this edge here. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a cut. So I'm gonna use this point so we're not changing the edge that we're using for our loft at all. But I'm gonna bring a spline and just simply cut through the part here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Once again, just sort of cutting into the part and saying, okay. Now I'm gonna use these as trim tools. For this one, I'm gonna just trim off the outside edge of the bottom piece. I'm gonna repeat that using my right click menu. And this time I'm gonna trim off the outside of this one. Actually, sorry, I'm gonna trim off the outside of this one here. So hiding the sketch, now we've changed the outside edges of these surfaces. So let's see what those options do. We're gonna to go to loft and we're gonna use the same loft again. And once again, we can use tangency or curvature. And as soon as we go to the profile, let's go to profile two first and say align edges. It's gonna, it's gonna start to overlap just because of the curvature here. Let's go ahead and try the option for tangency and see if it'll build. Now the result is gonna be exactly the same whether we're using tangency or curvature continuity. But really what we wanna see is what happens at this edge here. So when we change this to align edges, what we're doing is we're following the trimmed edge. The trimmed edge that we use that sketch for, the edge of our new surface is carrying the tangency based on that cut. However, if we do align surface, we're getting the original result because what we're actually doing is taking the curvature of the surface and that's controlling the direction of the edge of our new loft. The reason that this is difficult to understand on most cases is because the direction of the edge and the curvature of the surface are almost always the same if you're building out a loft from profiles and going between profiles, whether you use the direction option or you're going straight between. In almost all cases, the align to surface and align edges are gonna give you the same result. It's not until you actually go in and trim the edges or you're building it out using some guide curves that you'll notice a difference. So let's go ahead and let's apply this to the top one as well, just so we can get an idea of what it happens to do up here. So once again, tangent, profile two, I'm gonna do align edges. Again, on this side, it's not going to matter. It's gonna give me the same exact result. However, this one where we split this edge, this is where we're going to see the difference. When we do align edges, it's gonna take the cut, the tangency of the edge, and when we do align to surface, it's going to take the continuity of the surface and it doesn't care about the cut or the trim of the edge. So once again, the way that the surfaces were defined originally is oftentimes the problem or the, the issue here when we switch between align to surface and align edges, because if the continuity of the edge and the surface itself are in the same direction, the option here won't change anything. So how do we think about this downstream as to which option is best to use? Well, if both options are giving you the exact same result, it doesn't really matter which one you use, they're gonna produce the same results. However, if you happen to have a cut edge like this, that's where you wanna think about using align edges versus align surfaces. There is going to be an inherent difference in the surface because you are changing the overall topology. So when we say okay, you can see now what we're doing is we're carrying the direction of that cut and we're doing the same thing over here, carrying the direction of that cut. Now, there is one nuance here that I do wanna mention. I, I said that it doesn't matter if we're using tangency or curvature continuity, and that isn't exactly true. If we're using curvature continuity over tangency, it will produce a different result, but the options still behave the same. Now, the reason it produces a different result is because tangent is inherently looking just at the direction of curvature, whereas the G2 continuity for a curvature continuity edge is looking at the direction, but it's also looking at the radius of curvature. Uh, so we don't have G3 continuity here. These are the only two that we have to play with, but it will change the surface, but the option still behaves the same. So that's what I mean by it doesn't matter if you're using tangent or curvature. The only thing that really drives this is whether or not 
the direction or tangency of the edge is the same or different than the tangency of the surface itself. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and thanks for leaving comments and questions, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.